take a look at three types of sedimentary rocks. Plastic, chemical, and organic. This rock wall is an example of sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are derived from igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. Sedimentary rocks make up around 75% of the rocks on the Earth's surface. Let's take a look at how clastic sedimentary rocks form. Clastic sedimentary rocks are the group of rocks most people think of when they hear the term sedimentary rocks. Clastic sedimentary rocks are made up of pieces of pre-existing rocks called clasts that vary in size. These sedimentary rocks follow WED CC in order to form, which stands for weathering, erosion, deposition, compaction, and cementation. Weathering is when pre-existing rocks are broken down. This may occur by freezing and thawing of water inside the cracks of rocks, trees and other plants growing into cracks, and even blowing winds. Next, you have erosion, which occurs when these class or pieces of rocks are created during weathering and then are transported by either wind, water, or even gravity to a new location. Deposition is when the particles are deposited as loose sediment. Usually this is near a body of water, but not always. Over time, compaction occurs as layers of deposition build on top of one another and begin to squeeze together. Cementation occurs eventually when the minerals in the water will act like glue and cement all the pieces together. The end result is a sedimentary rock. This process of loose sediment hardening into rock by cementation and compaction collectively is called lithification. What do these rocks have in common? Halite, gypsum, and hydrite, and limestone. They are all chemical sedimentary rocks. These rocks typically form from either evaporation or precipitation of mineral rich waters. Let's take a look at two demonstrations that will help you understand how chemical sedimentary rocks form. Up first is evaporation. And here's what I did. I first dissolved a cup or so of Epsom salt into water. So you can see me pouring the water into this. Next, I poured this, I stirred it up and poured it into a pan and put it on high. This way you can begin to see the water evaporates and I have it on uh, fast time lapse and as you can see as it evaporates you can see that the water the minerals dissolved in the water becomes a solid and here's what it looked like at the end okay so kind of cool looking rocks so that's evaporation next I had precipitation and it's the process of transforming a dissolved substance into an insoluble solid from a supersaturated solution. And for this supersaturated solution, you can see I used borax, borax, and then I went ahead and poured it and dissolved it, okay? Then I took this supersaturated uh, liquid with borax in it, and I poured it into a nice cup. And then what I did was I used some pipe cleaners and made a little sculpture and placed it in there. And now you can see the time lapse, and here's what happened. As the minerals precipitate, you can see they begin to form a crystal. So there we go. And now when I pull it out, that's what the crystal looks like, okay? So you can see how a rock would form, a chemical sedimentary rock would form from precipitation, okay? So in summary, Chemical sedimentary rocks are formed by either evaporation of mineral-rich water or precipitation of mineral-rich water. Organic sedimentary rocks are sedimentary rocks formed from once living matter. The sediment in an organic sedimentary rock is made of fossils. Organic sedimentary rocks form from the accumulation and lithification of organic debris such as leaves, roots, shells, and other plant and animal material. The hard parts of animals, such as bones and shells, can become cemented together and over time make a rock. Or, plant remains may be covered underground for millions of years 
to make an organic sedimentary rock. Coal is an example of an organic sedimentary rock. The way in which coal is created is typical of how organic sedimentary rocks form. Millions of years ago, plants and animals die and become buried. Over time, additional layers of peat, lignite, and sediment get added to the original organic matter. Eventually, all of this sediment and organic matter accumulates and will be transformed by pressure and heat into coal. Some limestone is another example of organic sedimentary rock. Organisms such as oysters, clams, mussels, and coral die, and their shells and bones are broken down by the ocean and settle onto the ocean floor. Over time, these layers of sediment begin to form, and during burial and lithification, the sediment precipitates out of the water and limestone is formed. Phosphoriferous limestone is limestone with a large number of fossils. This is because the once living organisms died and are covered by sediment, which over time create pressure and lithification and transforms the fossils and sediment into rock. I hope that helps with organic sedimentary rocks. And remember, kindness multiplies kindness. Be kind to someone today.